Happy holidays everyone, it's John and welcome back to the Fat Hipster channel. Today, I'm going to be reviewing something that I got from Popeyes. But I got this thing from Popeyes maybe a month ago, yet I'm eating it right now. So what could that potentially be? Why it's none other than a Popeyes Cajun Spiced Turkey. I don't have any Popeyes bags here with me, or anything with a Popeyes logo on it, really. You'll just have to trust me on that one. This was the Popeyes Cajun Turkey, which you had to order um, online or call it up and pick it up or have it delivered. Um, I ordered it online, had it shipped. It was frozen, but it was already pre-cooked. They deep fried it and I think they smoked it as well. Uh, but it was a Cajun spiced turkey. I re I uh, cooked it up for my Thanksgiving dinner. Of course, this is the Monday after Thanksgiving, so it's probably uh, a good time to either eat the rest, throw it out, or freeze it. But before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and give you a review of it because content. Anyway, here it is. Well, there's a lot here, you can see. And yes, I'm eating Thanksgiving leftovers for a review. But anyway, let's go ahead and try it out. I have some white meat and some of the dark meat. This is all... Uh, cut off the big turkey. I don't know I have the carcass anymore to show you. Um, but this is the Popeye's Cajun turkey. Let me try it out. I will let you know that I have some gravy up on there. I made this gravy mm. I'll put my napkin over there. It is, as turkey goes, slightly dry, but it's definitely not the driest turkey I've ever had. I'm able to chew it and swallow it without spitting out any sand. Here's some dark meat. It's a little bit of a jaw workout, but this was pre-cooked frozen turkey that was cooked again in my oven here and then sat in the fridge for a few days and I microwaved it, but now I'm eating it. And yeah, it's slightly dry. But I've had way drier turkeys straight out of the oven. And that piece was nice. It has some fatty bits to it. So here's my overall opinion. Of the Popeye's Cajun Turkey. Two thumbs up. 
a lot of people in my household were skeptical of getting a Popeye's turkey that was pre-cooked and reheating in the oven that it was going to come out super dry. But it came with a bunch of like in the sealed package. It was a lot of like the original fats and juices still in there. In fact, at the end, I actually melted down everything that was in the pan, solidified it, removed the fat layer, and then all of like the little bits at the bottom I cut off. Oh, and before that, I actually I put it through a filter to get all like the big chunks of cartilage and meat out of it that were that weren't rendered down. I removed the fat, and I removed like the seasoning and little bits of particles that settled down to the bottom. So I just cut off the top and cut off the bottom, and in the center, I now have uh, saved this clarified turkey stock that has a Cajun seasoning to it already um, that I melted down again so I can put it in a different device to re-solidify it and freeze it so I have some really good turkey stock uh, with nice gelatinous fat content. Um, that I can use for something in the future. The seasoning on this turkey is really good. When it came out of the oven, the skin on the outside was super crunchy and crispy, but to a lot of people's surprise, it was not really dry. It was actually quite moist. And the, um, the whole turkey has like a Cajun flavor to it, but the exterior had a lot of pepperiness on it. So if you bit into that like crispy skin, it was like really flavorful. So let me go around my plate and show you everything I made for my Thanksgiving dinner. First of all, this. You might be able to see is a form of macaroni and cheese. Since I went with a Popeye's turkey, I made everything a Cajun inspired. This might not come across in this video, but these are not regular macaronis. See how long that is? This is actually made with bucatini. And bucatini is actually like, if you cut this like right here, it is a thicker noodle but there is a little hole going down the very center imagine like a pack of spaghetti but it's thicker and it has a hollow tube in the middle and I chose that because when I looked up some Cajun macaroni and cheese it did have uh, that as a, a recommendation to use the spaghetti or bucatini it has sharp cheddar as well as mozzarella cheese in it um, for flavor and for gooey stretchiness. But that is delicious. Next up, I have a Cajun mashed potatoes and gravy. This was made with Yukon Gold. And too much butter and cream cheese. But it was delicious. Also had the same gravy on the chicken for that. Next up, this is actually a copycat recipe that I made um, for green beans. Not green bean casserole, but these are just cooked green beans with ham and bacon. And like a thicker hot sauce we had some flour and butter in there to make it a little bit thicker and this was a copycat recipe for Popeye's green beans now Popeye's no longer sells green beans it's a discontinued item but 
if they taste this good, which I'm sure they don't. But you can't go wrong with bacon and ham mixed into your green beans. And then the next thing I made, this is a little bit different than you would see at a normal Thanksgiving meal, but it is something you get at Popeyes, and that is red beans and rice. This was made with um, dried red beans that soaked overnight and then boiled in a pot with some seasonings and stuff for a few hours and added some of the andouille sausage over some cooked rice. You can't grow over it because rice. This is probably the spiciest thing I've made too. I think because I added spice to the beans, but I also didn't realize how spicy the andouille sausage was going to be. It was still very tasty. And there's a few things I made to complete this. One thing I don't have right now, uh, because I've just gone, were rolls that my wife made uh, based on a recipe from Lambert's. Lambert's, if you've never been, it's in Sykes, Missouri. The, they're famous for throwing their rolls. Someone comes out of the kitchen with a big thing of rolls and they throw them across the room. I don't have those, but those were good. In this cup, I made some sweet tea and some homemade lemonade. Super refreshing. Now I have one more thing to show you uh, because if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do it all the way. This is the dessert that I made. This is a chocolate delight or sometimes called a chocolate yummy. Uh, this is a pecan shortbread crust. The crust was made by my wife. Um, following upwards we have a cream cheese layer, sweet and cream cheese. Above that I have a chocolate pudding layer and on top of that we have a whipped cream topping. I'll let you know that uh, last night my youngest son made a huge mess eating one of these, but he loved it. Um, it's so good in fact that my older son, who was feeling a little bit under the weather and had gone to bed at that point, when I said, hey, uh, do you want some cake? Because, you know, he just, the younger one saw this and said cake, so I just went with it. Who comes out of their room feeling better? The older boy. I want some cake too. So they both ate some. Here it is, the chocolate yummy. I'm a hatch. The best thing about this one is that I made sure not to make any part of this super sweet because you have so much going on here that uh, if you don't balance this, it's going to just taste like sugar. So the, the cream cheese part, you still get that tang from a cream cheese. The chocolate part, I actually used bittersweet and dark chocolate. So it punches through the tanginess and the sweetness to give you more, not necessarily bitter chocolate, but bittersweet chocolate. And then of course the whipped topping. Light, just a nice creamy sweetness to top all that off. It's a pretty good dessert. Mm. And there you go. That is a review 
of what I made for Thanksgiving this year. Tell me in the comment section below what you made for Thanksgiving. If it was anything different than the typical uh, Thanksgiving meal. Uh, if you have anything that you typically make that's different than what other people might consider traditional. Anyway, thank you for watching this video. Give it a like, subscribe to the channel. Uh, starting December 1st, I'm going to be reviewing a beer calendar. Some reviews will be in this format, video reviews. Some might be a live stream video review, and some might be just exclusive picture of the bottle and the pour and a short description on my Facebook for the Fat Hipster channel. Uh, so go to Facebook and search for the Fat Hipster. Uh, there's 25 beers. They're all Illinois specific beers. I believe they're from 25 different breweries in Illinois. They're all supposed to be one-offs of original things that they made. So like the only way you can get these beers specifically is in this advent calendar. Uh, so like it might be like the regular IPA, but with like a mango or something added to it. Um, but they're all exclusive to this pack. I'm very interested. Uh, the pack is still sealed, so I don't know what's in it. Uh, every day what I'm going to do is in the morning, open that days up, take a picture of the bottle, put that bottle in the fridge. Later in the day, I'm going to open it up, pour it out, take a picture of it in the glass. And then either write a review or film a review. I'm not sure how many of each one of those are, but there will be 25 that I will post in some way. Well, I hope to see you there. And uh, there may or may not be other reviews peppered in through there as well. All depending on, you know, my taste for what's new, what's out there. Uh, but that's not new. That's how this channel's been since the beginning. Anyway, we'll see you then. Bye.